Flight attendants are on the front lines when it comes to our air travel experience. Not only do they serve us food and beverages, but they make sure that we stay safe and that the flight goes smoothly. But that doesn't mean that there aren't obstacles around which prevent a smooth day in the friendly skies. Here are 10 kinds of passengers that flight attendants hate. As we check the overhead bins and give the safety speech, please direct your attention to that red subscribe button. Uh, to make the most out of your flight today, give that button a tap. If you want to stay up to date on the latest with the richest thing, click on the gray bell to turn on your notifications. Are you ready for takeoff? Let's go. Parents. Okay, so we're going to get this controversy done and over with in the beginning. We're not always thrilled to be on a plane with a baby or a toddler, but they have to travel too. We're not talking about these kids. We're talking about the parents of unruly kids. You've encountered them. They kick your seat, they complain, they scream, they run up and down the aisles, and more. If you're trying to keep your kid under control and failing, that's one thing. If you aren't trying at all and leaving it up to the flight attendants to maintain order on the plane, then your flight crew probably resents you. A lot. Plus, the other passengers on your flight won't be your biggest fan either, since they too have to be in a confined space with you and your kid while 30,000 feet plus in the air. Sure, your little snowflake needs to run around to get some energy out, but have them do it before you board the plane and don't let them kick the seat in front of them. Also, letting your kid run up and down the aisles while screaming is probably one of the most obnoxious things in the entire world. Ugh, bros. We've all encountered them, or you may have even been one of them. We're talking about bros. They are usually groups of guys who are part of a fraternity or a popular group of people. They wear backwards baseball caps, Ralph Lauren polos, and throw up hand signs while they're expressing their masculinity with cries of, dude, bro, and yo. Flight attendants hate these passengers because not only do they congregate as a group, but they are also sneaking alcohol onto a plane, playing loud music, posing for photos, and playing drinking games like beer pong. This is a nightmare for flight attendants because bros are usually breaking a few FAA regulations too that can compromise the safety of the flight as well as the attendant's job. Not to mention groups of bros usually need a larger space to have their shenanigans. As we know, planes are really small spaces with tons of people packed in. Loud noises and people gathering around a row of seats can trigger claustrophobia and can cause obstructions in the aisleways when flight attendants are trying to walk through. Bros are especially prevalent on flights to places like Las Vegas, as well as any hot spring break location. Larger than life. In an age where body positivity is becoming the norm, it seems a lot of that goes away once we step into an airport. We all come in different shapes and sizes, but airline seats and bathrooms aren't made to accommodate this. Every time we board a plane, it's like entering a cookie cutter world where it's getting more difficult to fit in each day. Airlines are trying to figure out how to fit even more people on a plane these days. That means if you have a larger physique from being a bit overweight or you're a bodybuilder, you might have some issues fitting in. What's really not fair is that some airlines are making larger passengers buy two seats to accommodate them. If you don't fit into a seat or you're in a battle with your roommate for the armrest, your flight attendant probably notices and they aren't a fan. It turns into a logistical nightmare for them where they have to reseat you or another passenger, get you a special belt, you know, the works. It's highly unfair and it seems that airlines are still stuck in the old times and need to be more accommodating of different body sizes without making someone pay for an extra seat. First class dads. We all want a break from everyday life and relax a little, but if you're the only one giving yourself the perks, then you might be greatly disliked by the flight crew. Flight attendants have said that one of their biggest pet peeves is when a family is on board a plane where dad puts himself in first class and leaves his wife and kids in coach. Usually the dad travels a lot for work and is able to use his miles to give himself a bit of an upgrade. But when mom is stuck having to watch the kids, it kind of makes dad seem like a major jerk. In some cases, first class dads might even take the opportunity to hit on other people in the cabin while their wives are preoccupied. For flight attendants, they often get stuck in a battle between morals and their need to maintain a job. The only thing they can do is continue working and resisting spilling the beans to mom in coach. Yeah, dad can have all the champagne and snacks that he wants, but moms need a break too, especially the ones who are stay-at-home moms who don't get much of a break at all. To the moms who've been in this situation, your flight attendants are pulling for you. 
middle schoolers. If you're an adult, take a moment to think back about your time in middle school. You're not a little kid anymore in elementary school, but yet you're not really a cool older teen like a high school student. In short, middle school is usually the time when we're at our most awkward, where we're trying to figure out who we are and what we want from life. Now multiply that by 50, and you'll get the gist of how a flight attendant might feel when there's a plane full of middle schoolers who are on a class trip. Flight attendants are hating on this group because they have all their prepubescent hormones along with their crazy social hierarchy that makes the cafeteria from Mean Girls seem like Disneyland. Unfortunately, the flight attendants are the ones who are trying to dispel the drama, keep the noise down, and prevent said middle schoolers from opening the wrong door or poking a hole through a window. Keep in mind, this primarily pertains to school trips or church outings. Well, it looks like the fasten your seatbelt sign is off. While you're roaming about the cabin, here's a quiz for you. We all know flying causes dehydration, but how much water do we actually lose while in the air? Find out at the end of the video for the answer. In the meantime, oop, the seatbelt sign is back on, so let's move along. Awkward carry-ons. Standards for carry-on bags have progressed in such a way that it seems like they're getting smaller and smaller. But regardless of how many size checkers there are, there's always that one passenger who brings a bag that's way too big to be a carry-on. Flight attendants then have to deal with playing their own game of Tetris as they try to accommodate the passenger. But once it's realized that the bag doesn't fit, all hell breaks loose. The bag has to be gate checked, and a lot of the time the bag owner is throwing a fit as well. Or a passenger will take up all the overhead bin space and then proceed to take their seat that's several rows away, thus taking away overhead space for the passengers that are sitting right below it. Then, you guessed it, the flight attendant has to do some major damage control. So in closing, if you're going to bring a carry-on and it's too big, you might want to go ahead and check the bag. But if you decide to take the risk and it doesn't fit, show your flight attendant some grace so that you're not on their list before the plane has even taken off. Needy people. We all want someone to take care of us, but eventually we've learned to take care of ourselves. If there's one thing that the flight attendant isn't supposed to do, it's be our caretaker. There are often over 200 people that they need to watch over, and taking care of trivial things isn't on their list. However, there is always one flight attendant that's too nice for their own good and will deal with a needy passenger. Flight attendants have dealt with demands like smaller ice cubes, fizzier sodas, passengers who want their nuts and pretzels separated, and more. Just because the flight attendant smiles and walks away, they're probably picturing the horrible things they would do to you if they didn't need their job. Imagine dealing with someone who's a picky eater, needs a specific type of blanket, wants a certain brand of water, wants the engine noise to be turned down, a special movie ordered, etc. It's exhausting to even think about it, right? Plus, there are usually more than just a few needy passengers, so you can imagine what a nightmare a flight can be. If you don't want your flight attendant to hate you, then maybe take care of yourself. Touchy-feely. You would think that this would be a well-known fact, but considering how much it happens to flight attendants, we're going to shout it from the rooftops. Flight attendants hate passengers who touch them. They get poked, felt up, or even assaulted. It all comes down to personal boundary issues and manners. Poking someone while you speak with them is just plain rude. Just because a flight attendant is an employee of the airline that you paid for, it doesn't give you the right to touch them as you please. Flight attendants also deal with getting felt up and touched as they walk down the aisles when they check to make sure everyone is safe. If you think a flight attendant is cute, you might still want to keep the flirting at bay. The flight crew is there to make sure everyone is okay and that the plane is functioning properly and so on. If the flight attendant is distracted and something happens, then there's a higher risk of someone getting hurt. If you're single and lonely, there are apps for that. And in case someone needs to hear it again, flight attendants hate touchy-feely passengers. Potty party. When nature calls, you know you have to answer. If you don't, then you're in for some discomfort. But when you're getting ready to do some air travel, you need to plan ahead. For example, flight attendants hate it when a passenger has to use the bathroom before takeoff. This is because once you're done, you have to fight your way down the aisle as people are heading in the other direction during the boarding process. If you want to avoid having to do this, use the bathroom by your gate before boarding starts. The agents behind the desk give plenty of warnings before they start boarding. Another thing that ticks off flight attendants? Congregating around the bathroom in a line. This prevents the flight attendants from moving up and down the aisles quickly, as well as getting that food and beverage cart moving. 
If you're blocking the way, the flight attendants can't serve people. What else can you do to seal the deal on your flight attendant's hatred towards you? Use the bathroom right before the plane is about to land. Sure, you can tell the flight attendant to deal with it, but when you're getting tossed around the john as the plane is touching down, well, that's your own fault. The blame game. Finally, you can call this the ultimate kind of passenger that flight attendants hate, the person who blames everything on them. Too cold? Blame the flight attendant. Too hot? Where's the flight attendant? Too much turbulence? Stop shaking the plane, flight attendant. Tell the passenger next to me to stop existing. We all know a person like that. This kind of passenger is usually someone that can never be pleased or satisfied with their flight experience, and they will proceed to nitpick every moment of the flight. They are usually the same type that will hit the call button more than they should so that they can complain about their experience. This kind of passenger usually fails to understand that the flight attendant isn't in control of the turbulence, as they can't control nature. They're not the ones physically flying the plane, and they're there to maintain order and make sure that everyone is comfortable with what they have. Flight attendants have called these types of passengers high maintenance, and they don't get paid enough to deal with those kinds of shenanigans. How much water do we actually lose while in the air? Studies show that we can lose up to two cups of water per hour in the air. This leads to dehydration, which can lead to deep vein thrombosis. So maybe skip the soda and just get some bottled water during your flight. Was that a smooth landing? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this flight, then give this video a like and join our frequent flyer program by subscribing to our channel. For extra rewards, don't forget to give that gray bell a ring. See you later. Bye-bye.